This video provides an overview of the surgical procedure you are or soon will be undergoing. The type of skin cancer that you have requires a specialized and highly effective surgical technique called Mohs Micrographic Surgery. The procedure was developed in the 1930s by Dr. Frederick Mohs at the University of Wisconsin and is now practiced throughout the world. Mohs surgery differs from other skin cancer treatments in that it permits the immediate and complete microscopic examination of the removed cancerous tissue so that all the roots and extensions of the cancer can be eliminated. Due to the methodical manner in which tissue is removed and examined, Mohs surgery has been recognized as the skin cancer treatment with the highest reported cure rate. Physicians performing Mohs surgery must have specialized training. In addition, the Mohs surgeon must have the required surgical and laboratory facilities and be supported by a well-trained staff. We understand the diagnosis of skin cancer can be a worrisome situation, but the treatment of this condition should not be a frightening experience. Because Mohs micrographic surgery is done under local anesthesia, each patient can expect to be awake during the procedure with no greater discomfort than when the initial biopsy was performed. Please do not hesitate to ask us questions at any time during the procedure. Skin cancer, like cancer in other organs of the body, is the result of the uncontrolled abnormal growth of cells. The transformation of normal skin cells into skin cancer has a variety of causes, the most common being sun exposure family history, and ethnicity. Sunburns are the leading cause of skin cancer. Tanning is the skin's defense response to the skin's damaging rays, ultraviolet light. But tanning does not prevent skin cancer. One severe sunburn can increase your risk of skin cancer by as much as 50%. Sun damage to the skin accumulates over many years of exposure, and about 90% of sun-induced skin cancer occurs in the areas that have the greatest exposure, namely the head, neck, and forearms. People with a family history of skin cancer are at an increased risk for developing skin cancer. Individuals with fair complexions develop skin cancer more frequently than those with dark skin. When the cells of the skin begin to grow in an uncontrolled abnormal fashion, a tumor will result. This tumor is malignant. A malignant tumor is considered a cancer and should be removed to prevent the possible invasion and destruction of surrounding normal tissue or spread of the cancer to other organs of the body. This is known as metastasis. Fortunately, metastasis of skin cancer is not common. However, skin cancers frequently invade surrounding normal tissue, causing extensive destruction of skin and bodily structures. Basal cell carcinoma, BCC, is the most common type of skin cancer in the United States. Approximately one million cases of BCC occur annually. About 80% of all skin cancer cases are BCC, the slowest growing and least dangerous of the three common types of skin cancer, and it rarely metastasizes. BCC develops from the cells in the epidermis, the surface layer of the skin known as the basal cell layer. Basal cell carcinoma may have many different appearances. It most commonly appears as a small pearly skin-colored bump or nodule. Basal cell carcinoma can also appear as a flat growth, a scar, or scaling area. Untreated, basal cell carcinomas may begin to bleed, crust over, and spread into surrounding tissue, leading to more extensive surgery and scarring. Squamous cell carcinoma, SCC, is the second most common type of skin cancer in the United States. Approximately 200,000 cases occur annually. SCC is responsible for about 16% of all skin cancer cases. This cancer develops from cells in the epidermis known as squamous cells. Squamous cell carcinomas are more dangerous than BCC because they have a greater tendency to recur after surgery and to metastasize to other organs in the body. It often appears as a red nodule or rough scaling patch. Malignant melanoma, MM, is a life-threatening skin cancer that develops from the pigment-forming cells in the skin. It often presents as a black or brown mole. It can also include other irregular colors, such as red, white, blue, and gray. Malignant melanoma is the least common of the three types of skin cancers, but it is the most dangerous because it has a strong tendency to metastasize to distant organs. In recent years, we have seen an increase in skin cancer rates. One of the major risk factors that can be controlled is sun exposure, 
It is important to keep exposed skin out of direct sun and to use a good sunscreen on exposed skin when you are in open daylight for more than a few minutes. Damage to the skin is cumulative. The best prevention is to protect your skin from direct sunlight as much as possible. Mohs Micrographic Surgery is a state-of-the-art treatment for skin cancer in which the physician serves as surgeon, pathologist, and reconstructive surgeon. It relies on the precision and accuracy of microscopic analysis to identify the skin cancer location and ensure removal of the skin cancer down to its roots. The advantages of Mohs Micrographic Surgery for selected skin cancers are, it offers the highest cure rate, up to 99%. It has the lowest chance of cancer regrowth. It spares the most healthy skin in the tissue removal process. It minimizes the potential for scarring or disfigurement. It is the most exact and precise means of skin cancer removal. And it is cost-effective outpatient surgery utilizing local anesthesia. Mohs Micrographic Surgery is effective for most types of skin cancer. However, it is most commonly used to treat basal and squamous cell carcinomas. Mohs surgery is the treatment of choice when the cancer is large, the edges of the cancer cannot be clearly defined, the cancer is in an area of the body where it is important to preserve healthy tissue, or is likely to recur if treated by common methods. Such areas include central face, eyelids, nose, ears, lips, and cheek. Skin cancer that has recurred, or for which prior treatment has failed. The cancer is especially aggressive. Or the patient has a deficient immune system, such as kidney or heart transplant patients. Mohs Micrographic Surgery is the most precise method for skin cancer removal, with the highest cure rates. With this method, the surgeon checks the removed tissue while you wait. Further surgery can be performed immediately, and repair of the surgical wound is usually completed the same day. Many cancers may form roots or fingers of diseased tissue that can extend beyond the boundaries of the visible cancer. Cancers that are most likely to form these complicated root systems are located in cosmetically sensitive or functionally critical areas around the ears, eyes, nose, lips, and scalp located in areas where excess tissue is minimal, such as the fingers and genitals, or where circulation is poor. Cancers that grow rapidly and or uncontrollably, or are cancers that have been previously treated. For these types of skin cancers, common treatment methods may not be successful because some of them do not rely on a microscopic examination to determine the extent of the cancer. This can lead to recurrence of the skin cancer, necessitating additional surgery. During a Mohs surgical procedure, the Mohs surgeon removes the visible portion of the tumor and the following activities take place. A thin layer of tissue is removed from the tumor site. A map or drawing is made of the removed tissue to be used as a guide to the precise location of any remaining cancer cells. The removed tissue is sectioned, thinly sliced, then mounted on microscope slides for examination. The entire bottom surface and outside edges of the tissue section are thoroughly examined under the microscope to check for evidence of remaining cancer cells. If more tumor is found, its location is traced on the map so that only areas with remaining skin cancer undergo further surgery. If any of the sections contain cancer cells, the Mohs surgeon uses the map to return to the specific area of the tumor site where the skin cancer is still present. The surgeon then removes another thin layer of tissue only from the specific area within each section where cancer cells were detected. The newly removed tissue is then microscopically examined for additional cancer cells. If microscopic analysis still shows evidence of disease, the process continues layer by layer until the cancer is completely removed. When the removed tissue shows no sign of disease, the removal process stops, preserving or saving healthy normal tissue. This technique ensures that all the diseased tissue is removed, thereby minimizing the cosmetic impact. The importance of leaving as much normal, uninvolved skin as possible is readily appreciated when the skin cancer involves the eyelid, lip, nose, ear, or face. The advantages of the Mohs procedure to the patient, simply put, is that a smaller wound will heal quicker and with a smaller scar. The following information will help you understand what to expect before, during, and after the Mohs surgery process. We will conduct a pre-operative consultation to review your health status and medications, accurately locate and make decisions regarding removal of your skin cancer, 
and discuss post-operative care. You are encouraged to ask questions concerning your skin cancer and surgery. Unless instructed otherwise, have a light meal prior to your surgery. A good night's rest before your surgery is also helpful. Take all medications as usual unless directed otherwise. Be sure to discuss with your dermatologist whether you are taking aspirin, aspirin-containing medications, Coumadin, Plavix, or any other blood thinners. Some discomfort may be noticed following Mohs surgery, but severe pain is uncommon. If you have discomfort after surgery, we recommend that you take two extra strength Tylenol tablets every four to six hours as necessary. Avoid aspirin or aspirin containing products because they may cause bleeding after surgery. Bleeding or other minor complications may arise after surgery. You will be given post-surgical care instructions should any of these minor complications occur. Swelling is common following any surgical procedure, especially around the eye. Some degree of swelling can be expected, but this usually resolves within one or two weeks. All surgical wounds will drain during the first week or so after surgery. Good wound care will help minimize this problem. Infection after skin cancer surgery is unusual. However, if you notice signs of infection, call our office immediately. An antibiotic is frequently necessary under these conditions. Some degree of redness is expected following your surgery. This will resolve as the wound heals. You may experience redness at the surgical site for up to a year, depending on the circumstances of your surgery. If the redness begins to spread out from the wound, it could be a sign of infection or a possible allergic reaction to the ointment or tape used to dress the wound. Call our office if you suspect a problem. Your surgery will be performed in our office as an outpatient procedure. We recommend that a spouse, relative, or friend accompany you to our office. You will spend most of your time for the procedure waiting while your tissue samples are being examined under the microscope. Also, we strongly recommend that your companion drive following your surgery. Shortly after your arrival at our skin cancer center, you will be escorted to one of our outpatient surgical suites. We will then numb the area of skin around your cancer using a very small needle and a local anesthetic. A thin layer of skin involved with the cancer will be removed. Any bleeding will be controlled by cauterizing with an electric needle. The wound will be bandaged and you will be able to return to the waiting room. While you are waiting, the piece of tissue will be processed in our laboratory, where it is frozen, cut, stained, made into slides, and read under a microscope by your doctor. This entire process usually requires about an hour. On average, the complete removal of the skin cancer will require two to three trips to the surgical suite. Some cancers, due to their spread into local tissue, will require more sessions to remove the tumor completely. However, even these larger cases can usually be completed in the same day. You should come prepared to stay all day because it is likely you will require some type of repair of the surgical wound following removal of the cancer. This is usually performed on the day of surgery, but rarely must be delayed a day or so. If you have had a skin cancer, you are likely to develop another in the years ahead. To minimize your problems with skin cancer, you should be evaluated frequently for new suspicious lesions on your skin. The following is information that will help you know when to have your dermatologist look at any unusual skin lesions you may have already and how to prevent skin cancer. Skin cancers start as small bumps on the skin that slowly or sometimes rapidly enlarge. These bumps are usually pain-free and may have been present for a period greater than two weeks. Skin cancers frequently undergo periods of ulceration and bleeding followed by healing, then a repeat of this cycle. Your dermatologist should examine any skin lesion that has a history of bleeding. Skin cancers may have a variety of appearances. They may be flesh-colored, waxy or pearly, red scaly patches, large tumor masses, or sores that do not heal. A biopsy may be required to determine if the skin lesion is in fact a skin cancer. Some additional tips to prepare for Mohs micrographic surgery are, if deemed necessary by your physician, make sure you have taken your preoperative antibiotics before surgery. To further reduce the chances of bleeding complications, avoid all alcohol three days before and three days after your surgery. Stop smoking for a period of two weeks before and two weeks after your surgery to improve wound healing. The size and depth of the surgical wound after removal of your skin cancer cannot be predicted in advance. The method of reconstruction cannot be predetermined either. 
Following the removal of your skin cancer, your physician will consider and discuss with you the options for repairing the surgical wound. The surgical wound will be repaired by stitching the edges together or by using a skin graft or skin flap. Most surgeons are extensively trained in surgical reconstruction. This includes basic closures, complicated skin flaps, and skin grafts. Most surgeons are trained dermatologists with extensive knowledge of the skin and its healing properties. We are concerned with both the functional and cosmetic outcome of your surgical repair. Generally, your physician will perform the reconstructive surgery necessary to repair the wound following removal of your skin cancer. However, occasionally the repair may be delayed a day or so. Delay of the repair by up to a week usually has no adverse effects on healing. At the completion of your surgery and repair, our nursing staff will give you instructions on how to care for your wound. Patients should understand that there is not an absolute guarantee that any given procedure will be totally free of complications or adverse reactions. Most surgery is no exception. During surgery, tiny nerve endings are cut, which may produce a temporary or permanent numbness in and around the surgical area. If a large tumor is removed or extensive surgery is required, occasionally a nerve to muscles may be cut, resulting in temporary or permanent weakness in a portion of the face. This is, however, an unusual complication. The surgical area may remain tender for several weeks or months after surgery, especially if large amounts of tissue was removed. Rarely, some patients experience intermittent itching or shooting pain in the surgical area. In addition, skin grafts and flaps used to cover surgical areas may not fully survive, requiring additional repair. This video is presented by the American Society for Mohs Surgery, its purpose is to promote the highest standards of patient care relating to Mohs surgery for the surgical removal of skin cancer and other appropriate malignancies. To establish a quality assurance and regular peer review of Mohs surgeons. To provide a forum for the exchange of ideas and methodology for Mohs surgery and related basic sciences. To promote the professional education of its members and the medical community in the principles and practice of Mohs surgery to encourage research into all methods of microscopically controlled removal of malignant tissue, and to provide information for public education relating to Mohs surgery.